Hi, I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac. The luxury liner Gotham Queen is headed for port in Gotham City, but we're warned that there's danger ahead. What kind we don't know yet, but it might have something to do with a couple of celebrities that are on board. It's been a lovely voyage, Captain Carlyle. And a great pleasure for me, Miss Glaze. Seldom have I had a passenger list including a world-famous ice skating star such as yourself and an international scientist from Iceland such as Professor Isaacson to keep me company. We've seen her before. Great Scott, the Cape Crusader and the Boy Wonder. Who? Penguin kidnapped her early in season one when she was a famous actress. She gave up acting, changed her name, and became an ice skater. But that's not all she became. Professor Isaacson is at the captain's table in the ship's dining salon, darling. Thank you, Glazier. She also teamed up with this week's villain, Mr. Freeze. He's got a fake iceberg floating in the harbor that doubles as his hideout, and he has ice magnets that are going to pull the Gotham Queen right up against the iceberg. Get some more men. Go up ice ladders. Then a ship's secure leap aboard. Isaacson's at the captain's table. Bring him back here. Eli Wallach is our third Mr. Freeze, and I think his accent is the worst yet. Isaacson told Glacia that he's bringing a secret formula for making instant ice to the Bruce Wayne Foundation. What they intend to do with such a formula, we don't find out. But we know what Mr. Freeze wants to do with it. Soon I'll be able to cover the entire world with an instant ice cap. And what good will the world be to you then? If everybody and everything is frozen solid, it's going to get really lonely and boring out there. I'm not sure he's thought this through. Mr. Freeze wants the professor's secret formula for making instant ice. Imagine that. The professor won't give it to him because it's only stored in one... You mean it isn't written down? To keep it a secret formula, it's bottled up in here. And memory is a strange and intangible thing, you frosty-faced fool. And mine won't work at your command. Freeze says, dismantle this iceberg hideout and we'll head back to our main one in Gotham City. There I'll deal with the professor and his memory. He has one other accomplice to take along. Be sure to, darling. I am going to take you with me. This little homing seal will come in quite handy in my little ice escapade. It was important for him to tell us that, not just the empty air. First it was just Commissioner Gordon, but by the end of this season we've learned that anybody can break the fourth wall any time. It's another one of the little things that makes this show so great. It's time for your supper, Isolde. And since Professor Isaacson is a scientist, maybe he can explain to Mr. Freeze that that's a sea lion, not a seal. His hideout is directly under the Bruce Wayne ice arena, of course. Why let all that ice-making equipment go to waste just doing one job? Make it work for him, too. One way it's been working for him is he threw the professor into a quick freezer and lowered the temperature to 200 below. That should freeze the formula out of the scientist. You're not even chilly! I'm an Icelander, you frost-bitten baboon. A slight drop in temperature makes little difference to me. Or not. Meanwhile, Batman and Robin are using the computer to check out the ship's passenger list. Emma Strunk. What was that? Emma Strunk, nothing there. Just a second, Robin. Emma Strunk, I believe, was born Emma Strunk and later changed her name to Glacia Glaze. Apparently, she thought that was an improvement. Holy ice skates! Exactly! A world-renowned skating queen. No doubt she booked passage under the name of Emma Strunk in order to avoid publicity. Once on board, of course, she would have been recognized. Yes, old chum, I have a strange feeling. That Glacier Glaze was Mr. Freeze's accomplice on the Gotham Queen. We haven't seen a really good example of Batman logic for some time now. That was refreshing. Miss Strunk slash Glaze is performing tonight, and Bruce Wayne is taking Mrs. Cooper to see her. The evening includes going backstage before the show to meet her. Meanwhile, at headquarters, Gordon has a visitor. But this was attached to one of its flippers. <gasps> Suffering icicles. It's a list of demands from Mr. Freeze. He's holding Professor Isaacson for ransom. 
He wants Bruce Wayne to go on TV at midnight and say the money is there, then have Batman and Robin deliver it. I'll call Batman on the red phone, you get Mr. Wayne on the other. Right. If you're telling yourself this ought to be good, you have a talent for understatement. Commissioner Gordon is on the other phone with Batman, Mr. Wayne. Uh, perhaps if we put the two phones together, uh, you could talk to him yourself. One too many words, Chief. You should have said, if we put the phones together, you can talk to yourself. Batman? Yes, Mr. Wayne. Have you heard Mr. Freeze's scurrilous demands? Just briefly. If Robin and I hacked his go-betweens, are you prepared to make the telecast at midnight and pay the ransom, Mr. Wayne? I have no choice, Batman. I hear what he's trying to do with his voice, but it's not working. They still sound exactly the same. Good thing Gordon has a crappy phone, so he didn't notice. Then may I suggest you tape the broadcast from the commissioner's office an hour earlier, and we will have a dummy package of money. A dummy package of money? That sounds risky. Risk is our business, Mr. Wayne. Of course, Batman, I have the same faith in you that all of Gotham City has. I hope Robin and I are deserving of that faith. I'll make the necessary arrangements and meet you at the commissioner's office at 11. Fine. Did you get all that, commissioner? I didn't like having to break that up, but welcome to YouTube. We cut to Glacia's dressing room. I'm about to go on, darling. What's happening? Nothing will happen until midnight, Glacia. But if Vane agrees to my terms and Batman and Robin deliver the money, everything's in the ice bag. And do I have a chilling clincher for the Cape Crusaders? Hello. Glacia. The knock, of course, is for Bruce Wayne and Mrs. Harriet Cooper, who is one of Glacia's biggest fans. How nice to meet you both. But I'm afraid things are a little chaotic around here. And such a pretty dressing room. Oh, my. What a darling compact. Glacia. Glacia, what happened? I was in the middle. It talked. No, Mrs. Cooper, the compact didn't talk. It's a little music box I picked up in Switzerland. Since it was talking, I assume it's a music box from the future that plays rap. Downstairs, Mr. Freeze has another way to freeze the formula out of the professor. Get me my dry ice injector. He intends to shoot the professor up with dry ice and super lower his body temperature that way. Dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide. It's a gas, as in not a liquid. When it melts, it has the same consistency as air, which means you're shooting a great big gas bubble into his bloodstream, which means he's dead. But it appears that Mr. Freeze is using a different kind of dry ice, a kind that stays cold in his veins and arteries, because science. This is Bruce Wayne, Mr. Freeze. We've received your message, and Batman and Robin will make the delivery when, where, how, and if you so advise us. In return, we depend on you to keep your part of the bargain and release Professor Isaacs into the caped crusaders. Good evening. He says, I don't know why Batman isn't here yet, but I don't have time to wait around for him. He leaves and almost instantly Batman and Robin enter. Funny they didn't bump into each other. Chief O'Hara wonders about this for a few seconds, then sees something shiny. When you called earlier, you mentioned something about the ransom note being delivered by a seal. Right, he flipped right in here. Where is the seal? In a bathtub down the hall. Why, Batman? Take this. It's a small echoing seal pulsator. In other words, a tracking device that you can put on the seal. He says it may come in handy later. They head to the window in their bat rope. What goes on around here? Just be calm, citizen. I'm no citizen. I'm here from London for a manufacturer's convention. Then welcome, sir, to Gotham City. You must be that gentleman I've read about. Aren't you a king or something? Robin, England has no king now. England has a queen and a great lady she is, too. Yes, that she is. But in a way, the lad is right. I am sometimes called a king. The carpet king, that is. Holy floor covering! Very apt, Robin. And speaking of floors, I think we should be dropping down a few more right now. His name was Cyril Lord, and this is his one acting credit. He said he was called the Carpet King, and that's true. In the 60s, he was pretty much the guy in textiles, and especially carpet manufacture. According to the sources I could find, he sold some expensive rugs to William Dozier, the producer, and this cameo was his payment. 
I couldn't find anything directly from either of the men to verify this, but I hope it's true. It illustrates that even if you have all the money in the world, you'll do some really crazy things just to be on TV for a few seconds. Good evening, sir. We have second story men in England, but this is ridiculous. Don't quit your day job. Professor Isaacson has his own problem. Force the professor in a quick freezer. With his veins full of dry ice, something may happen. Yes, his bloodstream will freeze solid and he'll die, you moron. He, Glacier and the gang, settle in to watch Bruce Wayne's broadcast. This is Bruce Wayne, Mr. Freeze. We've received your message and Batman and Robin will make the delivery. When, where, how, and if you so advise us. Are making the delivery and right now. Freeze examines the money, sees it's fake, and grabs his freeze gun. Your freeze gun is useless. <laughs> Thanks to the super thermalized bat skivvies we're wearing. Skivvies? Skivvies? It's fight time. <laughs> Vaporizing trans bomb pipe pump? Does he have any clue that that's not a German accent he's doing? Next, he'll go looking for the nuclear vessels. It says sub-zero temperature vaporizing cabinet. Vaporizing? And then they've cooled down a little. I will activate the vaporizing pipe pump and evaporate the cake double crossers directly into the ice of the Moose Bane ice cleaner. I watched his lips. I swear he said pipe pump. I have no idea what that is, but whatever it is, it's the vaporizing kind. They are beginning to frost up already! What fiendish freezing isometric exercise is this? Shouldn't their skivvies be protecting them, or are they one use only? Is it the isolated end of the dynamic duo? Have they concluded their refrigerated cycle to be vaporized and become a part of Bruce Wayne's ice rink? Stay frozen to your furniture. Tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. We do love our puns. I personally do not like Eli Wallach as Mr. Freeze. He can't get the accent right, half his lines are coming out gibberish, and his delivery is boring. Mercifully, he'll be the last Mr. Freeze. After part two, the character doesn't appear in the third season. They just couldn't find an actor who could pull it off. And I think we all know why. They didn't have Arnold to play him. Take two of these and call me in the morning. I'm Irving and I'm an Adamaniac.